Well, welcome everybody back to the Figure Kit Garage, fellow resin heads and kit builders. Brent Krug back with another out of the box review. The box you see on the table is my latest acquisition, which arrived this past Tuesday. And this is a collaborative effort between sculptor Kent Kidwell, sculptor Michael White, and Typhon Studios. This is a one third scale bust in four pieces of. Klaus Kinski as Nosferatu the Vampire. Uh, this kit was released back in July. Uh, it was $145 US. And I can already hear the questions clicking off in a lot of people's minds. Well, if you paid for it in July, why did it arrive now? Well, Mike Calvert is simply human. He's not Superman. And... A lot of things got in Mike's way this past summer to include life, having a family, shortages of mold rubber and casting resin, and also switching over to a new carrier to ship from Ireland to the United States. And thanks to uh, a little bit of uh, intervention message-wise from Paul Gill over at Gilman Productions, uh, he got sent off. And he's finally here in the collection. So let's begin. As I said, this is a one-third scale bust. And I will admit, I've been a fan of this film for a lot of years. And the only other kit that I'd ever seen of this particular character was released previously by Nocturna Productions. It was a two-figure set featuring Klaus Kinski in the title role of the vampire and Isabella Johnny as Mina Harker. And sadly, that kit is now long out of production. So as soon as Mike uh, had made it available, I decided to jump on the list and I waited patiently and believe me folks, the wait was worth it. Uh, as always, Typhon Studios, garage kits for everyone and a wonderful little oversized postcard showing the original poster artwork for the film and as I unwrap these pieces and take them out if you've never seen this version of Nosferatu uh, I highly recommend it it is available on blu-ray uh, from shout factory screen factory which of course I do have a copy of it and at last I looked it was going for about 14 bucks it is a stylized remake of F.W. Murnau's 1922 black and white silent film. And the movie was a very long time waiting for those of you who know the story of F.W. Murnau, Prana Films, and the making of the original Nosferatu. You know how many problems that that man had, not only making the film, but what happened afterwards. For those of you who don't know what happened, the original Nosferatu was a plagiarized version of Bram Stoker's original novel, Dracula. Minor changes were made during the making of that film, with the exception of Jonathan and Mina Harker, their names actually being used but Max Schreck in the title role was not referred to as Count Dracula, he was referred to as Count Orlock. But still, it was enough that Florence Stoker, Bram Stoker's widow, filed a lawsuit against Prana Films and F.W. Murnau, which resulted in a verdict in her favor, and an order was given that all copies of the film be destroyed. Now, that may sound like not a very big deal, but F.W. Murnau only had one camera available to him during the making of Nosferatu. So there was really only one print ever made. Remake, uh, reprints were made to be distributed theatrically, and some survived. And years after... Uh, the death of Florence Stoker on the day that uh, the original novel Dracula was set to become public domain, a director by the name of Werner Herzog decided to make 
his version of Nosferatu. And if anybody thinks that they don't know who Werner Herzog is, if you've watched the first season of The Mandalorian, you've seen Werner Herzog. He was the Imperial who uh, basically paid the Mandalorian to go find Baby Yoda. Yeah, that's Werner Herzog. That's the guy that directed Nosferatu the Vampire. And we're going to take a look at these pieces. The base was done by Typhon Studios. Head was sculpted by Kent Kidwell. And the bust body was done by Michael White. And for a collaboration like this, all three of these pieces fit and flow beautifully together. Very little to no cleanup. A little bit of flashing around the edge of the base, the nameplate. But other than that, this is a really wonderful interpretation of the character. And the likeness is really dead on. Forgive the expression. We'll take a look at the nameplate first. Wonderful uh, nameplate, and just like on the postcard, translated beautifully. Same logos and everything. The hammer and the stake on the left-hand side, and the bat on the right. Really, really captured well. Nice stone texture all the way around. Castings are absolutely beautiful. I'm very impressed with this overall. And then the main part of the base, where the bust will sit. Same stone texture. Not a very large footprint. Not a shelf queen. Really, really well casted. No cleanup on this part. Eh, maybe a little bit right there, but other than that, clean castings and Michael White's sculpting on the bust and the jacket and the lapels flow really well excellent detail especially hip here in the uh, around the necktie area or ascot if you will a little bat extra wide collar as he wore in the film and then there is the head sculpt. And this head sculpt is absolutely perfect in capturing German actor Klaus Kinski in the title role of Nosferatu. And in the Warner Herzog's remake, he was actually referred to as Count Dracula, not Count Orlock. But the veins along the side of the head, the points in the ears... The expression, the face. Kent Kidwell did an excellent job on this likeness. I looked at several screen captures of Klaus Kinski off of Google search, and he really hit that likeness beautifully. No seam lines whatsoever anywhere on this head. Maybe a little bit of flashing right there on the underside of the chin. But the cleanup on this, on the head especially, is absolute zero. No cleanup at all. And I'm going to do a little test fit on this guy. Find my Quake putty. See if it will cooperate this time. Ouch, I seem to have misplaced my quake putty. Shame on me. Uh, I'll go with it. The fit of the parts is very clean. Maybe a little bit of seam work to do around the sides of the, uh, the main bust itself. What I'll do is I'll tilt the camera back and lower the camera so you guys can see this from a better viewpoint. Doesn't make contact very well inside the head or the neck. But that's the display. 
that is how he will look fully completed nothing overstated or understated it is a perfect perfect sculpt of the character and overall from front to back we're looking at right around just a little over four and a half inches front to back side to side right around six inches and to the top of his bald head just a hair under eight inches tall like i said not a shelf queen just the a, a little bit of space and it's perfect for display and mike thank you very much my faith in you customer service wise has been well founded um can't say enough about this michael white and kent kidwell uh you guys really really did an amazing job on this so and for anybody wondering how much of a fan of this film i really am pull the camera back a little bit the soundtrack on vinyl yeah i'm that much of a fan of this film so i highly recommend this movie if you have not seen it check it out you may be able to find it on youtube but definitely uh contact mike calvert over at typhon studios he should have more of these available and let him know you're interested i'll leave contact information from mike down below uh, as well, I uh, want to thank everybody who has subscribed recently. And for those of you who have been subscribed that have stuck with me, thank you very much. Uh, I have two more reviews coming. Uh, one more tonight, one more tomorrow. And then I probably, I might do more reviews. I have a holiday work schedule coming up, which is going to probably keep me busy until Christmas Eve. But I will play it by ear as that goes. So for this review of Nosferatu the Vampire, sculpted by Typhon Studios, Kent Kidwell, and Michael White, and produced by Typhon Studios, this has been the Figure Kit Garage. <laughs> yeah. I meant to do that, not. This has been the Figure Kit Garage. Everybody stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. Build a kit.